we are getting closer and closer to finding out the secrets in the Justin Evans case. Today we're going to go on a little walk and show you the pathway that Justin would have taken if he walked there from the shed to the swamp back in December 2020. It's eye-opening. The authorities said that this was a difficult case early on. They also stated that it was a criminally suspicious case up until recently. Justin was found on May 19th, 2021. And all kinds of questions and theories have popped up since then. One theory was actually offered by the McKinney household. Now, law enforcement are now suggesting that Justin may have walked to the swamp while he was bleeding to death. And there was enough blood in that shed for him not to survive. In fact, from a reputable source, it said that it's about 40 to 50% also taking into account Justin's height and his size, that is the amount of blood volume that was lost. Yet five months after Justin died, he was found. And just after he was found, that's when the authorities made the suggestion that Justin may have been in a daze and walked to the swamp without a trace. And perhaps they said that he committed suicide or attempted to back at the shed. Notable dogs were not able to track Justin's scent anywhere outside of that shed. Justin didn't leave a blood trail either anywhere outside of that shed to the swamp and it said not one drop. Law enforcement said they searched the area back in December and then after Justin was found the family were told that they did not search that area. Now two days before Justin was found it's reported that kids were playing in that same spot that Justin was found and they were catching minnows, yet two days later, Justin magically appeared. And here is the map to the area where the shed is located. Over here is where he was found. Now it's over 1,000 feet away in a straight line, but you'll soon see that it's not a straight line and it's not that easy. Now a few things to note before I show you the clips. One, it was in December that this walk would have occurred, so the foliage would be different. Justin wasn't seen by anyone else other than the household from Wednesday, December 9th in the morning until the McKinney's called in the late afternoon on the 14th. So there's a five day window. The weather that week was a high of 6.1 Celsius and a low of minus six. And in Fahrenheit, that would be a high of 43 and a low of 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this walk would be a minimum of 10 minutes to get to where he was found. But remember, he was bleeding to death with an estimation of 40 to 50% blood loss and potentially dazed and confused. So it's safe to say it possibly or probably would take him longer. Now let's take a look at the footage starting in the trailer park. This footage was taken by Jamie, Justin's mom, and Kristen, Justin's sister. Have a look. So that's Justin's shed. We're just going to drive up the road and show you what the police allegedly say Justin would have had to have walked. Um, but we're not going to get out just for our own safety right now. Although most of the people in the park are, oh, like, fantastic. So at this point, we've gone by three other homes just on the left hand side he still would have been walking in another home I'm not going very fast about 10 kilometers an hour and another two trailers We're just going to kind of show you what and how far the police think that he actually walked, which is impossible. stop here. It looks like the path. There's a bit of a path here towards the pond and we'll see if we can get to it because this would be the most logical. logical route I guess. Just give us a second to get out.
All right, and I'll try to keep it steady. We've never been back here, so we're not quite sure. Clearly, this has been here for a long time. Maybe this way? And let's try this way. To give you an idea of what we're walking over. So they, the police want us to believe that somebody bleeding to death walked this on their own. I'm not sure we can walk this on our own. Kristen, would you hold that? Yeah. And we're not trying to take the roughest route just to pick the route that would be like you're just stumbling incoherently as the police are saying. Well, we've kind of gotten stopped here. But this is not where he was found. And this is there might be a spot over here. I'll see if we can get around this spot. Here. Your feet might get a bit wet. Now, just to say, we're also now on a steep incline. Not unwalkable steep, but it's certainly downhill. And now uphill. Would that be it, Kristen, over here? I'm just going to walk down here. Okay. Do you want me to take the fall? No. So. This is the spot where Justin was found. Right over here is our understanding. In this area. The kids come here and they. S where are you going, Kristen? Right here. Is that where it is? Not over here? No, it's over here. Oh. I thought it was over here. So even further. I can't really see you, but it, you might be able to see her waving through the tree. She's just on the other side of that big pine. And that's where he was found. That's where the signs were. There's no way that Justin walked this. Even if he had walked a different route, he would have had to have walked in the freezing 
cold, this wasn't frozen, through all of this swamp to have made it over here to be found. He wouldn't have traveled far by current or anything because there is none. Here, Kristen will do the walk with it just so you can have another idea because we know he couldn't have moved. I just don't want to go over there. I don't want you to either. Okay. I'm going to do this walk again. I just did it. I'll start from up here where we came in first. So me, so me and Mom walked up here, which you can tell is a trail that people walk on. So... I mean, if someone was in their right mind, so he would walk on a trail. The police are saying he's delirious. So you gotta come through here. And then this way. And then through here. Just slip a little bit, sorry. Through here. It's still going on the path that goes up here. To give you a reference, it kind of goes straight down here. You kind of have to walk on the edge of your foot. And through here again. And this is where the signs, they say Justin was found, here. But we were also told he was found partly in the water and partly out of the water. But it's not a shore, it's a straight down. So how did his body get part way out of the water and part way on the water? It's not moving, it's flat. There's also a tarp right here. Like someone was living there. I'm just gonna walk up here, show you guys. See, there's all the swamp area here. And the memorial's just straight out that way to where the road is. Oh, okay, we're gonna walk back to mom. Signs were stolen from Justin's memorial area that the community had set up and contributed to. And specific signs were stolen. One said that the OPP failed Justin and the other one asked where his phone and earbuds are. These signs that were stolen weren't randomly picked in my opinion. Now, Kristen mentioned in the video where she found the signs, which just happened to be the location where Justin was found, the exact spot. Interesting, isn't it? the exact location. As for his phone and his earbuds, they are still yet to be located. And in my opinion, that may have been a bold statement answering the question where the phone and earbuds are. And the person answering the question brought it to the right location. Maybe it wasn't there before, but maybe it sure is there now, right? Now the memorial area is right here on the map and Kristen even mentioned it the direction in her little video clip. Now the person or people who stole the signs didn't steal them and take them with them, didn't put them in their vehicle. They stole them, walked with them to the exact spot and then ran back, jumped in the vehicle and peeled off. It's pretty interesting. I mean, when you think about it, why would you do that, right? And if it's a suicide, why the need to take these signs? Oh yeah, because the suicide is needed to be a theory, right? Right. If it's a suicide, why would anybody need to steal these signs? And it certainly wouldn't be an officer. It, I wouldn't think an officer would want to steal those signs. And if they did, they wouldn't walk them to the swamp. So in my opinion, I can check that one off. Wouldn't be Justin because, well, we know where he is. Check that one off. Who else would it be? I mean, the signs around there was 
justice for Justin. We love you, Justin. I miss you. Yet those two were chosen. Now, who would want to take those two signs down? And who would know where the location was exactly? And why would they put it there? All great questions, don't you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's take a look back and talk about a potential route one would take or could take from the shed to the swamp area where Justin was found, if it were someone else, to take him there and maybe perhaps drive to the area and quickly. Now, if we look at the map, you can see where the shed is located again. And all you have to do is a little quick drive down that road, around the bend, and then you get onto Tower Crescent. From there, you head north on Tower Crescent and you do a quick right and then there you are, right where the memorial spot is, and then you just have to walk him in or carry him in, depending if he's alive or not at this point. Seems a little more logical at this point. And another question or some ideas now pop up. If Justin did walk, maybe he was with someone and not by himself. Someone who may have led him the way to get help and in his confused and dazed state, didn't know what was going on, just that he was getting help. Or maybe he was running from someone or some people, the people that tried to kill him and eventually succeeded. I mean, these are possible scenarios, but we still have that question about not leaving a trace. And I still ask, what's missing from Ken's shed? Because I'm betting there's something missing. You know, like, I don't know, a tarp or something? And if Justin lost that much blood, it wouldn't take long for his blood pressure to drop. You wouldn't think. And he'd then pass out from that blood loss and the lack of blood pressure. So how does a guy who's bleeding to death have also potentially have his blood pressure problems and being dazed and confused, walk a 15 minute walk or longer to the swamp without being seen by all those houses or anyone for that matter and not being seen in that swamp for five months. And why would he be in that swamp anyway if the guy's intention was to kill himself? Now, as I was reviewing past statements from the head detective, Matt Watson, I find it interesting that I found this one. And he says, and I quote, he has no enemies that we've been able to find. He has no high-risk lifestyle factors. And as far as we know, there isn't anyone who would want to cause him any harm. Hmm. No enemies, hey? Yet, we certainly do know one. And I don't know about you, but for a man who's looking to, let's say, harm himself and commit suicide, then why didn't he leave his phone and earbuds behind? What would he care? And in my last video, I proved where his phone was all week. It was at the trailer and should have been technically in the same spot the day the household called him in as a missing person. But it's no longer there and it vanished, just like his sunglasses but turned up two months later. Why would his other things be missing either? How did he walk that much with that blood loss without a drop along the way? And why lie about the whereabouts of where the household was if it was just a suicide? There's more coming. The truth is getting closer and closer. The walls are closing bit by bit and the patterns are emerging little by little and no one can talk their way out of this one. It's just too late. Stay tuned for the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.